Next, I'd like to talk about a couple of special cases. When your rigid body is subject to only two forces, any kind of forces, reactions and applied force, okay, total forces are only two. It's called a two-force body in equilibrium. Okay? So it's a two-force system. The second special case is when this rigid body is subject to three forces. Now, these two special cases, okay, according to what we learned so far, okay, the forces must behave a certain way okay, in order for the rigid body to be in equilibrium. First, look at the two-force body. Let's say this body goes like this. Okay? The free body diagram okay, for this rigid body right, just draw the two forces. right? But because of the fact that the forces, some of the forces might equal zero, okay, and also the sum of moment about any point okay, also might equal to zero, this implies that these two forces applying on this rigid body must be acting along the same line of action. Okay. Just so that for this first equation, this force cancels out this force. Okay, so that's the only way that that uh, this equation satisfies. Also, okay, this equation being satisfied as well because okay, if you take moment about let's say any point along this line of action, okay, then none of these forces will have any moment at all. So therefore, some moment equals zero. But if, let's say, point O is right here, okay, some moment about point O equals zero due to these two forces. Okay, and keep in mind, some moment equals, in terms of the uh, scalar, okay, the magnitude, moment equals force times <coughs> D. That's the shortest distance the perpendicular distance okay, between point O and the line of action of force. So, <coughs> this <coughs> is D. Okay? So this force on the left will create a moment F1 times D. That's kind of clockwise. So the second force will create exactly F1 times D also, but clockwise. Therefore, some moment about point O equals zero, they cancel out. So <coughs> this is the only way where this rigid body can be in equilibrium if it's subjected only to forces. Okay? They have to be along the line, same line of action. If it's subjected three forces, there are two possibilities. The first is like this. F one, F two, and F three must be concurrent, which means that the line of action of these three forces must meet at the same point. Okay? Concurrent. Or, if two of them are parallel, then the third must also be parallel okay, to the other two, like this. Okay? So, these are the only ways where these two equations are satisfied okay? for the uh, rigid body to be in equilibrium. Okay, <clears throat> let's go uh, look at an example, uh, example 5.13 in the textbook. And we have this uh, uh, lever right here. Okay, it's a consists of two pieces, right? This A, B, C, okay, and then another piece, okay, uh, B and D, okay, that's linked up to it this way. Okay, now point D and point A are all pivoted, okay, and they're free to rotate. <coughs> And you're asked to find the reaction force at A. Okay. So in this problem, there are a couple ways to analyze it. Now, R A X and R A Y are the unknown. Okay. So we want to choose a free body diagram that will allow us to find <coughs> the reaction forces here, right? So <coughs> we can split 
this whole system up into two pieces. Okay? And the advantage is looking at just this BD piece, right? So just take this out. Okay? So this piece is subject to only two forces. A force at B, okay, it's a reaction force right, at B, and then a reaction force at D. Okay? That's it, nothing else. And this problem, we're ignoring the weight of the each piece. Okay? So this is a two force body, which means that these forces must be acting along the same line of action, and then they must have the same magnitude. Okay? If this is 100 pounds, then this must be also 100 pounds. Okay? Just an assumption, right? So we have to actually go ahead and calculate that. Okay, so knowing that these two forces must act along the same line of action, then you know exactly how they are pointing. Because you know that this is 0.2 meters wide and 0.2 meters long. So this triangle right here is a 45 degree triangle. Right? It's a right triangle. Right? So this force <coughs> is acting 45 degrees. <coughs> Moving on to this ABC piece right here. So you have this applied force, 400. And you have this force, exactly this right here. Okay, except that this, okay, is the force exerted by this ABC piece on this BD body. Okay, and this force is the same as this force in terms of magnitude, but they are opposite because this force now is the force exerted by BD on ABC. Okay. So <coughs> that's point B, that's also point B. Okay. C, A. So these two are the opposite. Okay. Also, look at this right here. This piece ABC the third force that's exactly the reaction force okay now <coughs> there's a couple of ways to draw the reaction forces you can draw the component RAX and RAY and that's fine or you can just draw RA itself okay these two are actually RA vector right so I can just draw that one single vector okay RA okay pointing in some direction, okay? But what direction do I know that? Well, some direction. And look at this right here. There's no other force acting on this rigid body, ABC. So, this is actually a three-force body. A three-force body must satisfy one of these two conditions, right? And since this 400 Newton and this F right here, the reaction force, are not parallel, this means that it's the first case right here. So which means that this third force must be pointing in a direction so that these three forces are concurrent. Okay. So I'm going to extend these two lines right here, <coughs> where the join is exactly where the third force, this RA, is pointing. Okay? So that's how I figure out the direction of this RA. Okay. So, <clears throat> so now we have these three forces, and we know exactly how they're oriented. Okay? And yeah, I'll meet at this point O right here. And we have this unknown force F, and we have this other unknown force RA. And there are two forces, two unknowns. Okay? Two unknowns, we can easily come up with two equations. Right? For this whole system. Alright, let's do a sum of forces. That's all. Okay? So just solve for F and solve for RA. And that's all. Okay? So, <coughs> F you know is 45 degrees. Right. What about RA? Well, knowing that uh, where it's, it's oriented, well, then you can just use geometry to help you figure out the angle. Right. 
this angle theta right here. Okay, so knowing okay, um, what's given here, so let's try to figure it out. Let's say, look at this triangle right here. Okay, so this triangle. And so from this point, point A to O, which is up here, so the vertical distance is 0 0.5 plus 0.2, so that's 0.7 meters. And then this distance, um, <coughs> the if this is 45 degree angle, so this is 45 degree angles also, right? Okay, and you know that from here to here, it's 0.5. It also means that this is 0.5, okay? Because look at this triangle right here, okay? So knowing that this is 0.5, and knowing that this is 0.1, so you know that this is 0.4. Okay? So this triangle right here, and knowing the two sides, you can find the angle because it's the right triangle, right? So just use tangent, okay? equals opposite over adjacent. So theta equals arc tangent 0.7 over 0.4 roughly equals to uh, 60.3 degrees. Okay, so knowing this theta then the rest is just a piece of cake, right? So you know, you know this this angle, right, for this force, you know this angle for this R A two unknowns, two equations. All right. The math is just, just very, very straightforward. Okay, alternatively, you can solve for this problem by, let's say, drawing the components of R A X and R A Y. Okay. So you have this force, uh, so given force 400, and then this is the reaction force, and then now I have RAX, RAY. <coughs> In this case, then you don't have to you know, try to figure out you know, the angle here, right? Because you know, it's just horizontal or vertical. Okay? But now I have three unknowns instead of two unknowns. So I need three equations. Well, we do have three equations, don't we? And we also have some moment equation. Okay? A moment about some point. Just choose any point. Well, choose a good point. The good point is where a lot of forces pass through that point. Well, look at this right here. I have these two the reaction force is passing through point A, so I just choose point A because they don't create any moment about point A itself. Okay. So this way, three unknowns, three equations, no problem. Okay. And this also a third free body diagram you can draw to analyze this problem. Okay. I can draw a, B, C, and B, D together. Combine them as a single free body diagram. Okay, so a single piece. What happens here now? What happens here is, well, if you look at the uh, um, the last video, we talked about internal versus external forces. This force F at point B and this force F at this point B, they are equal but opposite. We combine the two, they become internal force. So, they disappear. Okay? So there's no force here now, because it becomes internal. So, the only force, or forces that exist, are A, okay, are these two, but also, the reaction force here, which is this F right here. 